pushing me backwards with his fingers thrusting uh, into the left hand side of my body using his right hand as soon as he touched me I stepped back and I said look you know that's that's assault because I stated to him that I've been in the police force with the collision of bodies we sort of stepped back out onto the footpath and that's when the probationary constable stepped in and helped him take me down to the ground both my arms are gone like I can't brace myself for the fall or anything so I've kept my jaw up so I made sure that I didn't smack my jaw and, you know, bite my tongue or knock my teeth out or anything else like that. It ended up, it was a posterior dislocation. Since shooting pain all the way through the shoulder region in, in, into the chest area, the pec up, up through the neck, and that forced my face down into the um, footpath and broke the skin above my uh, eye on my right-hand side. I could feel like the, the pebbly footpath actually pierced into the skin. I received no treatment even though I asked for it. The charge sergeant, I asked for um, a sling. I, uh, he said, we've got none in the station. How much compensation do you believe you deserve? You're, you're taking away my, my actual freedom. So, I mean, that's got to be worth like a million. Who knows? Well, tonight we have a two-way FM exclusive. In the studio tonight, we're joined by a Port Macquarie man who claims he had his shoulder broken by local police during an arrest in one of the town's main streets. Our guest claims the level of force and aggression used by the officers involved was so excessive that his shoulder was dislocated from its socket and fractured, his face was cut and scraped, his arms and hands badly bruised. And despite his injuries, he says police refused to remove his handcuffs and that he was left without medical attention for more than an hour. Now, naturally, we have contacted the New South Wales Police for a comment about this incident, and they've told us that, as far as they're aware, there is no internal investigation being carried out into the incident, and inquiries made by us earlier today indicate that the officers involved are still on duty in Port Macquarie. Now, Peter, this is the first time that you've spoken publicly about what happened to you. Welcome to It's Time to Talk. Thank you. And you've also brought along your friend Pat, who was with you at the time of the arrest. Welcome, Pat, too. Good day. So, Peter, the charges that were laid against you after your arrest, yep. they were actually dismissed by the courts. You, um, yep. yep. They were recently uh, dismissed from court. Uh, the judge said it was an unlawful arrest. Yeah. Now, you, pl you pleaded not guilty. Yep. Uh, the judge, as you say, he threw the case out halfway through the trial due to insufficient evidence. I, I just want to make something really clear before we even begin today. We need to establish that you were completely and utterly exonerated. Yep. And you were found, uh, you weren't found guilty of anything at all. That's correct. So let's go back to January 22. Uh, mm. Now, as I understand it, you approached a police officer on Short Street, uh, yep. opposite the supermarket down there. Tell me why and tell me what was said. Well, I used to be, I was in the police force um, for two years from 88 to 90. I was stationed at Parramatta Police Station uh, in Sydney. So I understand the law and, um, uh, you know, procedure. <clears throat> there was a police vehicle parked um, on the parallel parking side opposite the uh, supermarket and um, they were blocking a, um, one of the uh, empty car parking spots that was actually one, the only one that was empty at the time they didn't have the hazard lights on they didn't have the police lights on and it looked like there'd been a, a motor vehicle accident um, I ended up finding out there were three vehicles involved in it the tow truck wasn't on the uh, uh, scene he'd been parked off somewhere else at the time so <clears throat> I was returning a, a uh, video to the you had nothing to do with the accident. Nothing to do with it at all. We'd, we'd come into town just to grab uh, a few things, um, you know, some milk from the supermarket, and drop a video back, and we're going to have a look down in the uh, in the computer store down the road from there. And uh, as I'm walking across, um, you know, to drop the video back, uh, I noticed it, and because you know, having been in the police, I understood what was going on. I thought it was a bit strange that you know they double parked there without lights on, or even the hazard lights weren't on. So. <clears throat> when I walked into the um, video store, I uh, had a bit of a rapport with the guy and you know, chatted to him before and I just said, oh, do you like the way the police were double parked out the front? And he's like, yeah, well, you know, one rule for some. And I'm like, yeah, some rule for others. And as I walked out, I thought like, well, you know, it's a bit strange. Like a lot of people won't actually approach the police. So I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll walk up and I'll ask him, um, you know, why he's actually parked in that manner. Um, the constable that was obviously the senior officer there, uh, he was actually handing a card to one of the gentlemen that was involved in the accident. 
he explained something to him about a phone number on it and I waited for him uh, until he wasn't doing anything and he stood stood there not doing anything for at least 10 to 15 seconds before I uh, engaged him in communication I just I said g'day constable um, and do you mind if I ask you a question and he's like yep what would you like to know and uh, he turned around and faced me and uh, I asked him I just basically said straight out and said look can you explain to me why you've decided to double park there please and he's um He's just straight up responded because we're the police, and I mean, I mean, <laughs> not not sounding sarcastic or anything, but I mean that's to me it's a bit obvious. You know, he's in a police uniform. Uh, I'm inquiring about a police vehicle being parked there. It's pretty obvious seeing that he's the police. So I re-questioned it and or reworded it slightly. I said, "Yeah, look, I understand that, but I'd like to know why you decided to park there." Um, you know, well, obviously it's illegal, and he just responded once again with because we're the police. Um, and communication started to go down from then on. <laughs> okay, you obviously didn't leave the matter. You weren't happy with the way he was parked. He's mm. he's responded in a way that you didn't like. Um, you pressed the matter. You you. I didn't. I didn't. Nothing. I didn't ask anything else after that. Um, mm. From then on, it was basically he. He then started demanding from me to supply a driver's license. Mm. So uh, I started to inform him, said, look, you know, under the general traffic act, you can ask me my name and place of abode, and he's just cut me off and kept demanding for a um, driver's licence. So I ended up turning around and telling him, so look, you know, I don't have one. Um, and he's like, uh, ends up, you know, uh, pushing me backwards with his fingers thrusting uh, into the left-hand side of my body using his right hand, um, pushing me backwards, saying, well, like, come on, get out of here, you know, blah, 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 and just... You know, obviously not willing to even like you know discuss anything further, and and just attempting to blow me off. He wanted you to go away. Yeah, he wanted me out of there. And what were you thinking? You did you? Well, you didn't want to go away. Well, as soon as he touched me, I stepped back and I said, "Look, you know, that's that's assault. I mean, it's common law assault under the um, the Crimes Act. Okay, you're not allowed to actually even touch somebody. So mm. I'm not allowed to come up and even put my finger on you. That's an offence. So he's already broken the law there. Um, and when I mentioned that. You know, he's like, well, that's not assault, you know, and, and kept going, um, you know, verbally at me. Um, well, I mean, it got to a point where <clears throat> he's once again pushed me and he said, look, go away, just get out of here. Um, you know, and he's, uh, I've said, well, why? It's a public place. I'm allowed to stand, you know, wherever I choose. You can't just tell me what to do. And he goes, well, look, I'm giving you a police directive. I said, um, uh, you've got to leave the area now. And I'm like, well, a police directive for what? You know, what am I doing wrong? You can't give me a police directive if I'm doing something incorrectly, right? Uh, or against the law. And he goes, well, you're blocking the footpath. And the funny thing was, was there was a woman walking past just at that time. And I've turned to her and I've said, look, you know, is, uh, you know, am I in any way blocking you from walking past? And she looked a bit fearful. I mean, a lot of people are fearful with, you know, uh, incidences with the police. So she looked over a bit, you know, concerned, but kept walking and didn't, didn't respond. And I've turned to the police officer and said, well, obviously, you know, I, I haven't blocked her from uh, walking past, so how could it be blocking the footpath? You know, which basically then it shows that his police directive is not a directive because, I mean, the, the footpath's three and a half metres wide. So <laughs> it's one, a really wide footpath, mm. and he, they were standing right in the centre of it anyway, or he was, yeah, the, the police officer. Pat, can I just ask you at this stage, like, you were witnessing all this without going further into the story just yet. Yep. Do you think that um, Peter here was act, uh, was he civil at this stage? Oh yeah, yep. What sort of language was he using? Was he ah oh, just as the, the way he spoke it then? Yep. Yeah, was so he's he just polite. A couple of yeah, a couple of questions. I was within about three feet um, of him the whole time. Cause, mm -hmm. uh, I had a little dog with him uh, with me, which I was holding, and yeah, he asked the questions. You know, why he double parked, or, uh, and then uh, the, yeah the police officer just uh, started to be aggressive mm -hmm. placed his hand on him pushed him back um yeah the aggression was all coming from so there was a physical aggression you could tell oh the yeah, from the police yep. officer, yeah okay so what happened next um well eventually what happened as i said like uh he'd been pushed he pushed me back and the second time he did it i ended up turning around and i stepped back put both my hands up um beside my shoulders palms facing him i said look that, that's assault you don't have permission to touch me and he's just like, go away, idiot. You, you, you're asking to be arrested. Do you want to be arrested? And just, you know, the typical verbal stuff. I don't know if anyone's uh, had any incidences running with police, but it's, sometimes there, there are ones that, um, you know, do attempt to... Um, when I was in the job, it's like a bluff. You know, we don't really have the power, but you tell somebody to do something because you just want them out of the road. 
and you, you just don't have the power to do it. So what happened was I ended up stepping back off the footpath. Right, and there's a little entrance between the shops. Uh, 